so I've got this curtain wall that I placed uh, last week with the um, storefront wall tile. And uh, that's really the first thing to realise with all walls, but particularly curtain walls, when you make new kinds of curtain walls, you're not working with fan walls. And uh, I know at first it can seem uh, a little bit uh, fiddly when you're trying to understand uh, when you're working with a family and when you're not. But if you simply uh, look at the type, if I click edit type, when you select the curtain wall, you'll see at the top it's a family, it says it's a system family, and that is the reminder. And so to make your own kind of curtain wall, you can't go and edit them in a separate file. You need to duplicate an existing one that's in a project file. And there is a reason. It's because you don't make them by modelling different forms and objects that you need. You put in a bunch of numbers and values to get the you know, desired output that you're after. So uh, it's essentially a formula that's going to give you uh, the kind of curtain wall you want. And so here, if I go to duplicate, I can make a copy of storefront too. Now, I want to make a copy of the simpler curtain wall, which is curtain wall 606 laser. And that's just a plain panel of glass. So you can see I'll just switch between those two with storefront. It's got all the settings for the uh, different mullions with the spacing done up above in the, uh, the grid pattern. So we've got a vertical grid and a horizontal grid, which do the spacing, and then you'll see the mullions are set to uh, all of those different uh, elements, which means essentially they'll be on all the walls and then on all the grid lines in between. And so if I go back to curtain wall 606 glazing, and uh, you can see then that it has no settings for the uh, grid or the mullions. I'll just click OK. And you'll see then it's going to give me a message uh, to tell me that if I proceed, it needs to either delete the grid lines or it can keep the grid lines that I have from storefront, but they won't be what I would have normally with this, uh, this wall type. So that's an unusual uh, choice to make. Normally you'll just choose, well, I think you would choose this option, delete grid line, which is going to do its best to get rid of the things that are there from storefront. Uh, but you can see then it's left the mullions. So that's just something to watch out for if I go and uh, draw a new wall. And so here I'll just choose from my wall types curtain wall 606 lazy. And a couple of points just to draw a new one. And you can see that it gives you a wall with just a plain panel of glass. And you can use them for that. It is useful if you just want that. But it's also important to realise that you don't really have that very often in the real world because glass is not a structural material. You need something to support it. Uh, exactly. So the frame can be recessed and so you can really use this wall if you've got a recessed frame and just accept or pretend that the frame is recessed there and uh, detail that in, in 2D afterwards. That's, that's fine. But otherwise uh, you can maybe use it for concept work and then later on develop up the structure. And that's fine as well. So at any point you can go and add mullions, just click on the mullion tool, and you can pick on any border. So here if I click on the edges of the glass there, it'll place a mullion, no problem. And that's what I've been left with on this wall. So I can always go and delete uh, those mullions as long as I can select them uh, using tab. So there if I go to click, it'll give me the wall, which is what's being highlighted, but if I press tab, it'll cycle uh, every time I press tab to a new object and so I just need to keep pressing it until I get the uh, mullion that I want and then I can click to select it. You can see it's, uh, well that's actually not giving me the pin, sometimes you might get it uh, to come up with the uh, pin symbol which is uh, going to be up here but uh, there it's not so I can just delete that and uh, so I just delete on the keyboard and uh, again using tab get the mullions individually, but that'll take a little while if I've got to select each one. So another option is to just make a window to select that object and using the filter, then I can go and turn off everything except the mullions. Right, so you've got those different uh, sub-components you can see again in the wall, and you can 
set them up as you saw in the wall type. So if you start with that simpler wall type, you're just going to use control and set all of these to um, that curtain wall six mil thick glazing. And again, I'll choose the option to uh, delete through line. You can see then it's giving the uh, margins again, so I'll just delete those also. And uh, I'll just select everything in the uh, scene there and use the filter. So you can start usually with uh, the simplest wall type possible, curtain wall type, which is which is this one, and then again edit type and duplicate when you want to build up uh, a basic curtain wall from scratch. Storefront's good as a quick starting point, but it's got a lot of settings in there that you probably don't want to use to begin with. So again, starting with this one, I can just go to duplicate now, and I'm going to put in. Uh, my, uh, my new name, so I'll call it, uh, well, are you calling it Bachi Bar this year? Calling it Material Bar? I mean, is it Material Bar or just Bar Design? That you're calling it? Material Bar? Yep, okay, so I'll call it that as well. So, Material Bar, um, get walls. You can call it whatever you like, just as long as it's the name you remember. And then, uh, all I'm going to change to begin with is the vertical uh, mullions. And so the vertical grid there, I can set to uh, maximum spacing. And then uh, it's just uh, escape me, the uh, spacing. I'm pretty sure it's uh, 1800, but I'm just going to double check on the drawings. Anyone else remembers? 1800. Oh, yeah, just make sure. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, so that's my spacing, 1800. And then I just want mullions on the interior there. I don't want mullions at first on the border. And uh, so there I'm going to choose 50 by 150 for the interior type, and I'll just click OK. And you can see there it's giving me a very simple curtain wall, but to get started that is uh, probably all right when you're doing uh, concept images. But for this space, it's important to have those more streamlined mullions. And so to go any further, you need to uh, do a bit more and uh, make a mullion family. So I'm just going to Press escape now, and uh, you can see then really just by again highlighting now, I can actually get this one directly, but otherwise, using tab, you can select the mullion. And you can see there that it's giving you the pin symbol. So, in other words, it's locked. And that's all because of the settings in here. So, because I've set a maximum spacing of that's not my uh, wall, that's my mullion properties. I'll go back to the wall and then go to its properties. So again, because I've set that spacing of 1800, it's locked to that at the moment. And that's, uh, I'd say, and also locked to this, uh, this mullion type. So it's 50 by 150 mullion. And that's just a little bit too chunky. The spacing's fine though. So again, if I use tab, I can select the uh, grid line and you can see again its pin. And again, the mullion. So, so to change that, in other words, you have to unpin it, either clicking on this here or up here. And then you can choose a different mullion type. And I just wanted to show that to you because it's first uh, when you're drawing, uh, especially curtain walls, it's not obvious which way, uh, which way they face. So in other words, which direction they go when you're drawing um, when you're drawing your wall line. So again, I'll just draw a wall over here to the side. And yeah, well, you can't exactly. That's why it's always drawn with the center line, and that's because essentially all curtain walls are defined from the center. 
Uh, and so you can see it here. That's the center line that's coming up, that dashed line, when I snap to this wall. And you can see then the glass is to one side of it. So they, they're sided just like any, any other wall. And I'll just draw a wall continuing here from the, uh, the end of this one. I'll go over to the left. And you can see that's facing down in the same way. So I can press space to flip it just like any other wall. And that would face it, uh, would the exterior face um, the north. And so, again, once you see the, uh, the center line, it makes it more obvious why the glass goes to one side. And uh, so if you draw the, um, again, just that plain curtain wall, plain glass, I'll just draw that to one side. And uh, maybe I'll just draw a reference plane over the center line. And so you can see again, that's what you'll get when you draw a, um, that plain uh, curtain wall. It looks like the glass is going to one side of it. And then when you do things like corners, Okay, so if I draw from the end here and come up, you can see that, again, we've got the, the glass to one side of that center line, and so we've got a gap at the corner, and it looks like it's not working properly, but that's actually how it's meant to be. Exactly, yeah. And it's all because of the mullions. So the default mullions are set up, if we go back to the 3D view, you can easy to see. Okay, so you've got all these default mullions, and so the one I chose before, 30 mil square, is a bit too small for the glass position that we have. If I go back to 50 by 150, that's large enough. If I go to the corner, you can see, um, firstly, to uh, place the mullions, I'll go to the mullion tool. And then in your list of mullions, you'll have some other default mullions, like the, uh, the corner mullions, the quad mullion I'll use. So that's a rectangular mullion. And if I choose the grid, there is a grid line at every corner or border, then you can see it works or makes sense with that glass set out. And again, looking at it in plan, you can see now with that center line, still set back from the glass, the mullion is centered on that center, on that center line. So that's the reason for the center line. It's for the mullion, not for the glass. But it can be a bit off putting when you're using that plain glass panel at first because it is to one side. Yeah. Uh, when you look at it again with this mullion, which is large enough again to uh, stretch all the way from that centre to where the glass is on the outside of that, uh, again, it makes sense. But with the smaller mullion, which is only, I'll just unpin this one, which is only 30 mil square, not 50 by 150. 150 is that way. It's 30 mil square. It's not big enough for this glass set. That's fine. You can change all of those things. So one simple thing you can do before I get into the mullion family, which is the main thing you'll need to do. Um, I'll just delete, delete that. Okay, so looking at the panel, I'll just draw a new curtain wall over here using the, the reference plane as a guide. And looking at the panel again, you can see it's set out from my from the line I've drawn over. So if you want that to go right where you're drawing it, you can simply select the panel. I'll do that using tab. Edit type, and you'll see it's got an offset. Okay, so I'll duplicate this. I don't change all of them. I'll call it, say, my glass. And I'll make the offset zero. And then you can see the glass goes right over the center line. So, uh, so that's uh, often uh, what you might do if you only want the sheet of glass. Uh, but, uh, Again, in this case, in this instance, uh, you mainly need a new mullion. So you can do the same thing with a panel. I'm going to make a new mullion in a moment, but you'll see uh, once you've done that, you probably can do the same thing if you want to make your own uh, panel family. Okay, so again, when you select the mullions, you'll see the kind of family they are. If you go to edit type, you can see it's a, again, rectangular mullion family. 
and we've got some different sizes for it. But uh, if we duplicate there, all we can do is make different sizes of rectangles. Now, the new money you need, you need is basically a rectangle, but you also need to think about the spacing. Okay, so I'll uh, anyway, we'll look at that in a, uh, in a little while. But if you just uh, go to the, uh, the main menu and then new, family, you'll see metric profile. So that's, that'll let you make a new Munion family. And then to draw it, it's simply a matter of using the line tool to draw a rectangle and then snap over the uh, center line, just roughly to begin with. And this is common with families, just draw the shape that you need very roughly, but think about the relationship to the references. And so they have drawn it with the lines you know, to each side of the center line. Okay, so um, again, this might seem a bit new to you if you haven't done a lot with families, but it's something that you really should uh, should be trying, hopefully. And uh, so with the dimension tool, now I'll put in the standard way you do your dimensions in a uh, family like this, which is to do a center. Okay, so using equals there, that now centers my rectangle over the center line. And then I can use the outer uh, edges to give an overall size. Right, so I'll do the same in the other direction. Okay, so one, two, three. This I won't set to be um, to be equals because I don't want that to be centered. Uh, we want that to be offset. Uh, but then again, I want an overall size. Well. Right, so that's a standard way or dimension, and uh, so all of these things now will be adjusted. Um, and just looking at this note here, you can see that curtain wall um, panels have uh, this extra option, I suppose, which is um, that it trims where the profile intersects with the plane. So in other words, where this rectangle intersects with this plane is where it's going to cut the glass. And that's a useful option you'll see when you do more complex profiles. That's really uh, in this case we just need to make sure those two lines cut the plane. Okay, so I've got my parameters set up now. I can put in the values that I want. Uh, so I've got my dimensions now. I need to add, attach the parameters to them. Sorry. And so if I select the dimensions, I can go to label, add parameter, and this one is simply going to be width. And then the other is. Uh, depth, and then ah oh, down here. So I just need to uh, edit that dimension and take out the uh, take out the back one. Yeah. And I just want the uh, the front dimension there. So I'll add a label to it and make it uh, set back. Set, set out, and just so you know what that is, I'll, I'll label it properly. Glass set out. Okay, so if you haven't done dimensions in this way, it's worth um, worth trying when you start making your own families. This is the normal way of doing dimensions, and in other words, setting your sizes, not just putting in measure, putting in the measurements on the screen, what I'm doing here is setting up a way of uh, making the size of this. So in family types, then I can go and adjust all of those things. Right, so the width is uh, 20 mil, and the depth is 100 mil, and then the glass set out, I'll just make, uh, put that as our center. vary that anyway. That's the whole point of having them as a parameter. 
Okay, so you can see doing those things, it's adjusted by rectangle. So I'll uh, just click OK, save as, and then put that into my own folder. folder, oh sorry, Mullion profile, what I call the family. So that's it, that's my family. And so the important thing to realise there is that families don't need to be complex um, 3D things that take forever to model. They can just be as simple as a rectangle. And uh, probably the majority of families I make are basic rectangles and things like that that I then load into other so now if I go load in the project, that will load it back into my project file. Okay, so then I can select the wall that I've made. Going to edit type. I can then go and have a look at the mullions. Having a look there, you can see it's not loaded. And that's because it's not that kind of family. This is a mullion family. What I've just made is a Mullion profile. So it lives in the Mullion itself. I've got to select the Mullion and uh, then go to Edit Type. And then I'm going to make a new one first because I don't want this to change. This is 50 by 150, that's the existing size. So I'm going to go to Duplicate and then I'll call this Material Mullion. And then the profile, you can see now, can be set to the one that I've loaded. So that's where you load it, and you'll see a lot of families work that way in Revit. It might seem like an unnecessarily complicated method, but it is perfectly logical, there's a really good reason for it. It's because that's the basis of design. And again, once you've got some experience designing some things that are actually built, you'll see why it's done that way. Uh, gutters are another good example, they're done the same way. When you're making a gutter family, you don't go and make a 3D version of that. You draw the 2D shape of the gutter and then you load that profile into a sweep family. So again here it's the same idea. You're loading the profile into this mullion family. If I click OK, you can see it's then set the, um, the new uh, mullion that I've loaded. But the glass now is uh, maybe too far to one side. So I'm going to select the panel now. Again, using tab, I can select the panel and then edit type and you can see it's got this type of glaze. So I'm going to duplicate it as well because I don't want to change the existing glass. I'll call it material glass. The offset I'm going to make less. So I think it's too, too far uh, as it is, so 20 mil. And then the thickness I'll make less as well. So do you have an idea how thick your glass is usually in real life? No more than 10 mil usually. That's a good guideline. So if you're not sure how big to draw your glass, 10 mil is not bad. Uh, you can make it thicker than that. You can draw the lines further apart though if you have um, a drawing where they're um, you know, just looking like they're too close together. But that's the real size. Okay, so there we are. I've got this new glass panel and the new mullion. Okay, so they're both set up, but what about the rest of the wall? The rest of the wall is still using the old ones. So the final thing I've got to do now is find the curtain wall. Here it is, my material bar curtain wall. Edit type. I don't need to duplicate here because I've already made my new type. I just need to set it to have my material mullion and my curtain panel. So notice it's set to none. That doesn't mean it's got nothing. It just means it's going to use the default panel, which is a default glass. So it had default glass before. Now instead, notice you can choose any wall panel. So if you haven't tried curtain walls and seen what they can do, uh, they're amazing. You can do all kinds of things. And so you can see any other curtain wall or any wall can be set as a wall panel. But here I want the one I've made, which is material glass. Okay, so there we are. Now it's all used it. And 3D, I'll just show you that. Okay, so 
So there's my new my new curtain wall with the new mullion. And so then I can go and select any curtain wall in the project. So I'll just select all of these with the control and set them to my new curtain wall type material bar curtain wall. And they'll all take all those properties. So you can see why people designing buildings and other you know, big projects uh, tend to use uh, tools like this a lot because um, you, know, you don't want to have to model every single video project. So if you can develop a system that is going to generate lots of content for you, then uh, that's a good thing. So notice one thing though, I left the ends off. But just so I can show you now, it's no problem to select that wall, go to edit type, and then set the border type as well to use the same mullion. set up so you, you don't have to make that, that's too hard, that making a panel like that at this stage, so I'll just give you that. Um, but you definitely should make a curtain wall mullion, that's not that difficult. Uh, and then the, um, what was the other one? Oh yeah, so we've got another curtain wall above for the hatch, for the popped up area. But, uh, or the clearance screen. But otherwise, uh, that curtain wall there is going to cover um, a lot of this and so just to uh, finish that off, when you've done the upper level, you could then look at also duplicating it down to the level below. And it's a simple thing to do. Uh, if you've had a look at the uh, images showing you the outside of the building, you'll see it's all basically clad in panel walls. Even the one at the end there, we could use curtain walls. But uh, definitely to just have something showing the lower levels. just different kinds of curtain walls. So we can just vary the one that you set up to the top level and it doesn't take long at all to get the rest of this building knocked out. But it will take a little while at first to uh, really get a good idea of that curtain wall tool. So I spent some time just familiarising yourselves with it and especially getting used to all the different subcomponents. So I'll just remind you as well about the, uh, the grid because I don't think that one was maybe all that clear. If I draw a... Uh, just one last curtain wall, so I can show you, Steve. Um, just that plain curtain wall again. If you haven't seen the, uh, the grid tool, curtain grid, uh, then it's worth just really making sure you've seen that you can place grid lines manually, and they are the same as what you'll get, even if they're uneven. They're the same as what you would get if you go in and put the curtain vertical grid and the horizontal grid in your curtain wall type. And then you can again use the mullion tool to uh, place different mullions on those. So I um, just want to make sure you know about that curtain wall, uh, sorry the curtain grid tool and that you can again select the curtain grid with tab and then uh, so just like any other object, move them. And so otherwise, um, the only other tool I want to point out there is the curtain system tool, which you might have seen. I just want to make sure you know about that one so you can avoid it. Because often people will think that's the main curtain wall tool. Because you see that button there, you don't maybe notice that the curtain wall type is there when you're drawing any wall. You can obviously choose, you know, now curtain wall from there. Curtain systems are for much more complicated things. So you can see in that little thing that flies out there with the curvy surface, that's a good example of where you might want to use a curtain system. You generally want for interiors to need them. It depends. I mean, if you're doing a complex thing, then maybe, but probably not. And at first, you really want to make sure you know the main curtain wall tool before you even have a look at that curtain system, which is a different thing. So, uh, you know, give you some time to, um, to get that done. Once you've got that curtain wall done, then um, there's a lot of modelling to do for the interior, but uh, that's really worth uh, making sure you're comfortable with curtain walls for this project.
project 